In this video, we're going to break down how our anesthesia machine helps deliver oxygen, anesthetic gases, and ventilation allows us to ventilate our patient who is asleep. So we are going to talk about the circle system. The circle system breathing circuit. It's the most popular and practical breathing system used in anesthesia today. And that's what we're going to be discussing. So let's draw one of these breathing circuits just to better understand how it works and working out its advantages over disadvantages, things like that. So the first thing we're going to draw is our patient here. We're going to draw our patient who is asleep and smiling. And they have a breathing tube that we placed successfully. And this breathing tube is going to be attached to our circle system. It's going to be a part of our circle system. So the circle system, as the name suggests, is a circle breathing circuit. This is our circle system. We're going to talk about five things that we add to our circle system in order to safely anesthetize our asleep patient. I'm going to draw them, or I'm going to write them out here, and then we're going to check them off as we go along. So the first one, fresh gas flow. The second one, reservoir, bag. And each of the locations of these things is very important to the integrity of the circle system. The third is going to be one-way valves. Fourth is going to be our escape route. Otherwise, more commonly known as our APL, or adjustable pressure limiting valve. I just like to call it the escape route. And then our fifth is going to be our carbon dioxide absorber. There are five of these modifications that we add in order to get this patient safely asleep and throughout the case. So if we have our patient who's asleep right now, uh, we administered our anesthetic drugs. That's great. Now our patient can't breathe. So that's not a good thing. We need a way in order to deliver oxygen to this circuit, to this circuit and to allow it to enter our patient. So we are going to draw here. This is where our fresh gas flow, our fresh gas flow comes into play. It administers oxygen and anesthetic gas, O2, and gases to our patient. So great, now we have an oxygen source, we have an anesthetic gas source uh, we can provide for our patient. So without a way now to make our patient breathe, our patient has oxygen, but our patient cannot breathe. So this circle system, we need a way in order to have some sort of appliance that mimics the, our lungs and allows our patient to inhale and exhale and ventilate properly. Right now, if we were to make our patient try to breathe, it would be the equivalent of putting a straw, holding a straw, breathing through a straw, and putting our finger at one of the ends of the straw. It's almost like you're creating a vacuum for yourself, which is probably very uncomfortable. So we need a representation of our lungs, something compliant, flexible, that helps allow our patient to ventilate. And that is where our reservoir bag comes in. So let's continue checking these off. So first, we administered fresh gas flow. Now we have our reservoir bag. So this reservoir bag basically acts as, as our lungs regarding compliance and flexibility. It gives us the ability to ventilate our patient. So the way that this works is that during inspiration during inspiration this bag contracts during expiration i'm just going to write i here for inspiration and during expiration when we exhale we're making this bag bigger so 
So we have those two components. Now, if you take a look, if we, if we draw this circle here, this circuit of our circle system, we have gases coming in this way, but also our fresh gas flow can also escape this way as well. When we exhale, we can exhale carbon dioxide this way, but we can also exhale carbon dioxide this way. That makes for a really inefficient mixed circuit. We need to have a way to provide some sort of unidirectionality to our circuit. And this is where our one-way valves come in. So we usually put a one-way valve here on the inspiratory side, inspiratory valve, and we'll put an ex a valve on this side of our of the circle system, which is going to be our expiratory valve. Expiratory valve. So now we have gas that comes in. Our expired gas does, cannot make its way up here. It will go this way. Fill our reservoir bag up. Likewise, our, um, our fresh gas flow is only going to go one way. It's not going to go backwards. So those are one-way valves. Now, usually when we administer fresh gas flow, we usually give it the amount or the rate in liters per minute. We give more fresh gas flow than what our body needs in order to metabolize and and um, perform all of its all, all of its metabolism. And the reason why we do this is because usually the anesthetics in our in our um, the the anesthetic gases has this potential to build toxic metabolites. So we usually, in order to prevent that, we usually have high fresh gas flow. So we're not going to get too much into the details, but let's say we have a fresh gas flow rate of two liters per minute, and let's say that's of oxygen. Our body only needs about 250, and this is all dependent on on um, on the size of the patient, but for the sake of simplicity, we need about 250 milliliters per minute of oxygen uh, in, let's say, this sized patient. So that means that if we only need 250 and we're delivering two liters per minute, we have about 1.7 liters that's building up in this reservoir bag. When we exhale, we're filling this bag, and this bag has nowhere to release all of that extra gas. So if we don't have some sort of way to release that pressure, our reservoir bag or our lung will pop and burst. So this is where our adjustable pressure limiting valve comes in. I'm going to draw right over here. There's spring attached to it. And what this does it is it allows an escape route of our excess gas that is provided in our circle system. And you can change at what pressure you want it to be released and things like that. Uh, but just for the sake of this video, know that this APL valve, which I'll write right here, APL valve, acts as an escape route for excess gas, preventing high pressure buildup in our circuit. Great. So now one of the last components of our circle system is we have pretty much everything all in place, but our carbon dioxide that gets exhaled does not have a way to get out of the system. And because of that, the carbon dioxide could recirculate to the inspiratory side of our patient and we could rebreathe carbon dioxide. So we have to have a way to absorb that carbon dioxide and cue the carbon dioxide absorber that comes into play. So our CO2 absorber is right over here. We talk about how it works from a chemistry standpoint in another video, but it pretty much takes CO2 gas and it spits out, it absorbs that and spits out water for moisture of our circuit and heat. So now we have carbon dioxide effectively dealt with and we're not rebreathing as much carbon dioxide as, would, as without a CO2 absorber. 
and our patient looks happy. And we'll check the CO2 absorber off. So to quickly summarize here, the circle system, we have a circle circular circuit. And the way that you try to remember or draw it out is remembering these five modifications. We need a way for oxygen to be delivered, so we have a fresh gas flow. We need a way for, uh, we need a compliant flexible bag to represent our lungs and provide some compliance to our circuit, and that is our reservoir bag. We need some unidirectionality of our circuit so that gas flows in a clockwise or, or in a circular fashion, in a unidire unidirectional fashion and that is our one-way valves. We need a way for excess gas to not burst our lung, our patient's lungs or the, uh, the reservoir bag, and that is where we put the APL valve. And then lastly, we need a way for carbon dioxide not to get rebreathed, and that's for that we have the carbon dioxide absorber. So that was a uh, brief intro or brief video about our circle system if you guys have any suggestions on how to make it better i tried to keep it simple shorter um, but please let me know